Hello Glamour Ghouls and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Midge Munster and on this channel we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Today is the day that we are finally starting on the Sleepy Hollow Yard Project. I am so excited to get into the uh, wide array <laughs> of crafting that we need to do to get this going. When I'm filming this, it is officially 50 days until Halloween, and so we've got a lot to do and not a lot of time left to do it. So I'm definitely uh, freaking out a little bit, but like in an excited way. <laughs> So part of what I wanted to do for this display was to create a vignette that includes the Sleepy Hollow Scarecrow from the Tim Burton film. But I wanted to push it a little bit further than that. And on top of that spooky, ooky scarecrow, I wanted to also have a kind of possessed, rotted pumpkin patch of very spooky jack-o'-lanterns. I know that's obviously not like a direct film or story reference, but with the horseman's head being a jack-o'-lantern, I just wanted to continue to play on that idea and make it extra creepy and spooky. If you're a member of my Patreon, back in April, I think it was, we tested a technique on these foam pumpkins to do kind of a, a melting technique that makes them nice and like deformed and creepy. It went okay. I didn't dislike the result of that. Basically with that technique, you take one of these foam craft pumpkins, you cut a face into the front of it and peel the like vinyl layer off of this. So these are the solid pumpkins, not like the Funkin or um, whatever the other main brand is that are like hollow carvable pumpkins. These are the ones that are like solid and filled with foam. So you would cut the face into it, peel the vinyl layer off, and then you take a heat gun and melt the outside, scrunching it so that the foam inside kind of collapses on itself and it gets all wrinkly, the face gets all gnarled. It's a really cool technique, but I think we can do even better. So we're still going to use that technique, but we're going to build on it a little bit in a way where we're almost gonna be kind of sculpting on top of it. I'm starting to get a little bit uh, overconfident <laughs> between my spider from January and then the sandworm that we just made out of the modeling chocolate. I'm kind of starting to have a moment of like, am I kind of good at sculpting? Like I'm obviously not a professional, but I think I'm a lot better at it than I initially thought I might be. I looked at a lot of different techniques and there's a lot of haunters that use a technique called pumpkin corpsing where they kind of wrap the pumpkin in like a saran wrap and melt that with a heat gun to get that texture. But I really want to focus on the faces and try to make those as dimensional as possible. So I found another video from Dark Nook and this was a really, really great walkthrough of this process. And what he does is uses cotton balls and Mod Podge to sculpt on top of the pumpkin and then does different layers of paint to really make it look dirty and old. So we're gonna try to combine a few techniques with the heat gun and the Mod Podge and the cotton balls and the paint. It's definitely gonna be a process and it's gonna take a long time to complete these. But I think once I get into the flow of it, it'll be really fun. So I have, I believe seven different sizes of these pumpkins that I found at different craft stores. You can find them at Michael's, Joanne. You can even find some at Walmart. It doesn't really matter what the outside of them looks like, even if they're like a very, like this one's a pretty bright orange and doesn't have a lot of interest to it, but we're gonna be completely covering it with paint and things, so it really doesn't matter. But this is one of the smaller, more affordable ones that I've purchased, so we're going to start with the technique on this one and test it out before we move on to the, the big expensive pumpkins, and uh, hopefully, we can get a really good idea of what this is gonna look like. All right, <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Let's jump in. Mm -hmm. 
I started by sketching out the face on the pumpkin just with a pen. Um, I would recommend, I ended up moving to a Sharpie later, but uh, at this point, this was the best I could find. So I was just sketching on what I wanted the face to look like here. And I found it really helpful to look online, on Pinterest and things, to look for scary pumpkin faces and get a variety of ideas. There are so many different ways to make a pumpkin face and I am not always the best at visualizing, so it was really nice to be able to look up all these different ideas and kind of translate it into the ones I thought worked best for my pumpkins. Then once I had the face all sketched out, I just carefully <laughs> took a razor blade and started removing this vinyl layer. So this is what I was talking about, um, how these pumpkins are full of foam on the inside. You just want to lightly take the razor and remove the outer coating. You don't want to score it too hard because you're not trying to remove the foam underneath. But this vinyl is just glued on to the foam underneath. So once you get a good scoring around the edge, you can just peel it back. Okay, so we have got our face carved, and I'm honestly, I'm really, I love how this face came out. I think he looks really, really cool. So now in the previous method, this is where we would have started using the heat gun to melt this foam back. Um, but in that dark nook video I watched, he started by peeling away some of this foam a little bit just to um, get it <laughs> get it out of the way and I think I'm gonna do a little bit of that just to I don't know I don't know if it's gonna help or if it's gonna make it worse <laughs> for the heat gun but it seems to me like it would help preserve the structure of these a little bit to pull back some of this foam first so I'm gonna do that and then we're going to take the heat gun to it, melt it just a little bit, a lot less than we did on the Patreon test, um, because we're going to be able to add a lot more texture with the cotton balls. So let's do it. look at this guy. This guy looks crazy right now. Hold on. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Anyway, I had to get that on film because it looks so freaking cool. 
Okay, anyway, sorry for that brief interlude. I just like, I saw the purple and I was like, I have to go look at this immediately. <laughs> so here's where we're at with him. I think he's looking really, really good. I like not melting it as much. I think that the just little bits of texture um, I mean, we did overall light texture and then bits of heavy texture, and I think that is looking really nice. So now, to add even more texture is when I'm going to go in with the Mod Podge and the cotton balls, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to do a little bit of sculpting. <laughs> like I said, I'm getting, um, I'm getting cautiously optimistic about my sculpting abilities. <laughs> oh my gosh, that reminds me. Okay. So speaking of sculpting, since we're here, I have to show you this. I got the coolest freaking package in the mail and I wanted to show y'all. First of all, look at this little card. So cute. So this is from Gabrielle and her Etsy shop is The Horseman's Manor, which first of all, great name. Um, but she just started up her business and she messaged me and told me she was gonna send me this. And at first I was kind of like, are you sure? Like you obviously put a ton of work into that, but she was like, yes, I'm sure. I can't think of a better home for it than you. And it would really mean a lot if you shouted out my business. So in the way of people who are actually talented sculptors, <laughs> oh my God, it's even so much cooler in person. So y'all know I love the film 13 Ghosts. Gabrielle made this taxidermy jackal head how amazing is this? I don't know if you can really see all the details, but y'all, this is like insane levels of detail and like just incredible, incredible talent. And then I loved that the name for her business is the Horseman's Manor because it's like all these heads. <laughs> it's so smart. Oh, she also included a couple little extra things. These adorable, man. <laughs> She is such a talented sculptor. Look at these little pumpkin magnets. Aren't they so cute? Oh my gosh, I love their eyes. And then there's a little uh, pin in here too that's a, a little candy corn. But yeah, I was just in complete awe of this, this jackal sculpture. Thank you so much, Gabrielle, for sending him to me. He will be very loved here. <laughs> and be sure to go check out her business on Etsy, The Horseman's Manor. She's also on Instagram as Gabrielle Godinez SFX, and she's a really talented SFX artist as well. So be sure to check her out. I just had to show you all that while I had a chance here because that's one of the coolest things I've ever been gifted. <laughs> it's really amazing. Okay. So now let's test out my own sculpting abilities <laughs> and get to building up some facial features on this little gentleman. Good morning. It is day two. Mm. 
I am drinking the most delicious fall beverage. This is the Autumn London Fog recipe from Your Best Halloween Ever. They just released it this morning and I was like, oh, I have to try that. Oh my God, that is fall in a cup. Speaking of Your Best Halloween Ever, before we get started today, I wanted to remind you all that I wrote a foreword for a book. This is Andrew Knowles from Your Best Halloween Ever, his book 13 More Tales for Halloween. It's a sequel to the first 13 Tales for Halloween. Really fun short story format, spooky stories for your Halloween season. And as you can see, a forward by yours truly. There also may or may not be a character based on me somewhere in this book. So definitely check this out. I'll leave a link in the description box below and let me know if you can figure out which character is midge coated. <laughs> so we let this dry overnight. I think it looks pretty good. What I will say is there's definitely a bit of a learning curve with this cotton ball method. I think a lot of the white that I was seeing on the face that was like built up was the Mod Podge more than it was the cotton balls. And so there seems to be less now than what I originally had intended slash there seems to have also been a lot of like shrinkage as it dried, which makes sense. But so this is just covering less area than I originally intended, but I'm not sure. I mean, I think we're just going to have to kind of wait and see what it looks like painted. I mean, that's still definitely going to add texture and character to it. And we already added quite a bit of texture with our heat gun too. So I'm not too worried about it, but moving forward with this as kind of our test subject, <laughs> I think we can just go heavier with the cotton ball technique moving forward. So now I have a decision to make because I can either spray paint these, which would be the like easiest and fastest option for sure, or we can paint the entire thing with acrylic paint. We're definitely gonna work with the acrylic paint to dry brush and layer it, but we wanna lay down a dark base coat first of either black or brown, just to give us something to build on top of. In the Dark Nook video I watched, he painted the inside with like a fluorescent neon yellow paint that glowed in the dark so that it kind of looked like a candle inside the Jack Lantern, which was very cool. Um, it's just not what I'm personally going for. I want more of that hollow, sunken, rotted look. So I think I want the inside to be black or brown which means I should be able to spray paint it because we're not trying to like salvage any of the, the space. I think we can just cover this in a full base coat of spray paint. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, I know I have some leftover matte brown spray paint from the Beetlejuice box for the tree. I think it's called Truffle Brown. So I think I'm gonna take this outside and lay down a coat of brown spray paint and hopefully <laughs> Hopefully we don't ruin our pumpkin. So let's go test that. Okay, so this little gentleman is now dry to the touch. And honestly, I think he's looking pretty awesome. He definitely looks like he's made of chocolate right now. <laughs> but the texture and everything is looking really gross and cool. So I noticed I missed a little spot back here, but that's okay because we're about to completely cover him in orange anyway. So I got a couple colors that were suggested by Dark Nook's video, the pumpkin orange and jack-o'-lantern orange from Apple Barrel by Plaid Paint. I just got these at Walmart and you could get small ones or you get a big tote of it. I got a little bit of everything they had basically. Uh, I will say these are a little bit like bright, which I know we're painting on top of brown and then we're going to be washing over it with brown so I know it'll get kind of dulled out so maybe we want it that bright. I have quite a few different variations on orange from when I did Bertram, my spider, so I think I might mix these down just a little, just flatten them out a teeny tiny bit so we're not so fluorescent orange. But basically, all we're going to do now is dry brush this, which we talked a little bit about in the mantle video, but all dry brushing is, is you take a completely dry paintbrush uh, and you're going to cover it in the paint and go over the high points of this piece, not really focusing on coverage. You want it to look kind of splotchy and textured so that those dark shadowed areas stay dark. 
So let's work on that and then we'll move to the next stage of painting. So this is what that pumpkin orange looked like beforehand. As you can see, it's very bright. So I took some of this uh, deeper orange and this red oxide that I have and tried to uh, just deepen it up into a little bit more of a reddish orange, a more true pumpkin in the wild orange. And I really liked this color. I think I ended up honestly throughout this process mixing up lots of different colors so that each pumpkin was a little bit different and that worked pretty well for me. And then all you're doing is, like I said, dry brushing this over. You do want to get, you know, most of the pumpkin covered with the orange, but you're not pushing the brush into the crevices. You want to leave those low spots as dark as possible to create that texture. Then once I had him completely covered, uh, you're supposed to go over them with this thin wash of brown paint. And I did that at first and wiped it off and then it kind of looked greenish. I don't know. It just didn't look how I would prefer it to look. So I decided to try something else. I remembered I had some floor stain left over from a previous project. So I took it out on the deck and tried that. So my camera wasn't recording, but I ended up <laughs> using um, some floor finish I had left over and same thing, just wiped it clean. And this is what it's looking like. We're gonna let it dry, see? Heads will roll. Okay, so here's where we are with him after the floor varnish stain. I'm pretty happy with how he's coming together. I think now we just need a little bit of highlight back in. So I think I'm going to go over some of these high points um, with the orange color on a really dry brush. Just like that. I think I may even, I have some of this really dull Naples yellow acrylic, Put a little bit of that on the side. I think I may just pick up a little bit of that even. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, that little bit of highlight really brings dimension back to his face. So I'm going to play with this for a little bit. I think I'm also going to go in and use black and darken up the insides just to bring even more contrast so he's really sunken in. And then I think uh, we're going to probably blend up here in the stem region just a little bit more. And that might be this one done, and this will be our prototype. Okay, so I think I finally reached a stopping point, or I'm gonna make myself <laughs> be at a stopping point. I could keep tweaking on and improving this forever and never be done with it, but I have to make myself be done. <laughs> As you can see, I had to switch into my glasses because my eyes got like I got an ocular migraine from like looking at details and also probably like smelling paint and things <laughs> so I'm gonna call him finished and this is gonna be the prototype we work from for the rest of them so here he is I'm honestly really happy with how he came together The texture is really good, that is certain. I think we can even approve upon it a little bit more. But overall, I'm really happy with how he came out. I think the biggest takeaways from this test, it's not a test, we're going to use him, but like this was the first time I tried all these methods stacked. 
I am realizing I think the really bright orange is important because I ended up going over and dry brushing him again with the orange at the end because he got so washed out that it almost like to me wasn't reading pumpkin anymore because there was no hardly any orange tone left in him. So I think I might stick with that brighter orange base. Also an important detail, any of these like little details, like his little teeth and stuff, if you want those to show up and stay really present after the melt, you really have to exaggerate them and make them pretty big in the original design or else they just melt in and get lost. <laughs> like you still got some little chompers down there, but definitely not. Um, as much as I had originally designed them to be. So that's just something to keep in mind when designing faces moving forward. I'm honestly also interested in adding even more heat gun texture, like more of these little gloopy moments. But I mean, the fun thing with this is you really can't mess it up. <laughs> so I'm really, really thrilled with this as a first go. The bad news is, is that this very elaborate time consuming technique worked very well, which means I now have to do that eight more times. <laughs> so I'm hoping it'll go a little bit faster because I did, imagine this, write down all the steps of the process as I was going so I knew exactly my order of operations so I didn't forget anything. I was very proud of myself for that. I'm not usually that organized. Also, obviously now having done it once, I have a better idea of what I'm doing. So I think it'll move a little quicker. And if I kind of assembly line, like do all the face drawings, do all the carving, do all the painting, I think we'll move through them somewhat quickly, definitely not quickly, but <laughs> it'll be you know enough that we can get them done in a, a pseudo timely fashion for this video but I'm certainly not going to make you sit here in real time and watch that process. So from this point forward, I'm gonna throw you into time-lapse and just let you enjoy me working through the rest of these jack-o'-lanterns. And then once we're all done, hopefully, hopefully we'll be all done in time for this video to come out. Then we will take a look at all of them together and hopefully have a very cool reveal. <laughs> So I guess with all that being said, I can no longer stall. I have to go do this. <laughs> so wish me luck. Hello. So it has been a few days since we last spoke. The last footage you saw of me on the deck with the heat gun was probably two days ago. And that is because during that footage, I, well, first I burnt my hand really bad on my heat gun, like right after the last thing that you saw. I was just getting really tired. I'd been working outside for a long time. I just made Kind of a careless mistake and so at that point i was like okay i'm tired i need to take a break so i was pulling everything in from the deck and i was backing through my patio door carrying one of the big pumpkins and i felt my tripod hit the back of my leg and before i realized what had happened 
my tripod knocked over and my camera landed face down on its lens. <laughs> Cracked my lens, broke the like telescoping function. Uh, and so yeah, I didn't have a camera lens to continue filming with. And I went to buy a new one and found out that my lens has been discontinued. So I had to order one uh, kind of specialty and wait for it to show up. So in the meantime, I kept working. We have a new lens now and I have finished carving and melting all of the pumpkins. So today we're gonna continue with the process of sculpting on these with the cotton balls, texturizing them, and we'll let them dry overnight. I just wanted to update you about why um, you hadn't seen basically any of these pumpkin faces because I had finished like two of them or three of them when my lens broke, so. <laughs> They're done! 11 days later, <laughs> they are finished and looking quite nice, if I do say so myself. I think these turned out really beautifully. They certainly, to me, are cooler than anything I could have purchased from a Lowe's or a Home Depot to put in my yard. These are not going out in the yard just yet because Taylor and I are getting ready to leave for my birthday trip to Sleepy Hollow. I'm so excited. Um, so we'll start actually decorating the yard in October when I get back. Before then, I am also going to coat these in some kind of epoxy or resin just to weatherproof them to make them extra impervious to Midwest weather. But I am just so thrilled with how these came out. And honestly, I had a lot of fun making them. And I think I might make it a tradition for myself to make a new one every year to add to the patch. <laughs> Certainly, if this is something that you are planning to take on yourself, uh, give yourself plenty of time and know that it is going to be time consuming. But in the end, you have amazing props that you get to keep forever and they're one of a kind and they're yours. And that's the kind of stuff I, I love to make. I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it was helpful if this is something you'd like to try yourself. If you are a member of my Patreon, I am going to put out a step-by-step -step process as well as a list of materials that I used in order to make these. Since I had already kind of mapped out the process for myself, I thought, well, that would be a really helpful thing for um, anyone going into this to have. So I'm gonna have that out hopefully in the next couple of days to Patreon members. 
If you are not yet a member of my Patreon and you would like to be, you can find a link for that in the description box below. And of course, as always, if you are not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel before you leave today. We would love to have you as a part of the Glamour Ghoul gang. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye. <laughs>